After Earth is a 2013 American post-apocalyptic science fiction action film directed by M. Night Shyamalan, who co-wrote it with Gary Witter, based on an original story idea by Will Smith. It is the second film after The Pursuit of Happiness that stars real-life father and son Will and Jaden Smith. Will Smith also produced via his company Overbrick Entertainment, and the distribution was by Columbia Pictures. The film takes place in the 31st century, when the Earth has long been abandoned and humans have been in conflict with a mysterious alien race. It tells the story of a high-ranking general in the peacekeeping organization Ranger Corps, and his son, who, after an incident during a spaceflight, find themselves fighting for survival on a hostile planet which is Earth itself. The film was released in IMAX on May 31, 2013. Upon release, After Earth was panned by film critics, its acting was criticized as melodramatic, and the writing and storytelling were also singled out for criticism. It grossed $243 million against a net production budget of $128 million. Topic. Plot In the near future, an environmental cataclysm forces the human race to abandon Earth and settle on a new world, Nova Prime. One thousand years later, the Ranger Corps, a peacekeeping organization commanded by General Cypher Rager Will Smith, comes into conflict with the Skrull, alien creatures who intended to conquer Nova Prime. Their secret weapons are the Ursas, large predatory creatures that hunt by sensing fear. The Rangers struggle against the Ursas until Cypher learns how to completely suppress his fear, a technique called ghosting. After teaching this technique to the other rangers, he leads the ranger corps to victory. Meanwhile, Cypher's son Kitai Rager Jaden Smith blames himself for the death of his sister Senshi Zoe Kravitz at the hands of an Ursa. Kitai trains to become a ranger like Cypher, but his application is rejected due to his recklessness, and Cypher views him as a disappointment. Katai's mother Fire Sophie Okonedo, convinces Cypher to take Kitai on his last voyage before retirement. During flight, however, the spaceship is caught by an asteroid shower forcing them to crash land on the now-quarantined Earth. Both of Cypher's legs are broken, and the main beacon for firing a distress signal is damaged. Cypher instructs Kitai to locate the tail section of the ship, which broke off on entry to the atmosphere. Inside is the backup beacon which they can use to signal Nova Prime. Cypher gives Kitai his weapon, a wrist communicator and six capsules of a fluid that enhances the oxygen intake so he can breathe in Earth's low oxygen atmosphere. Cypher warns him to avoid the highly evolved fauna and flora, and be careful of violent thermal shifts. Kitai leaves to find the tail section, with Cypher guiding him through the communicator. Kitai is attacked by giant monkeys and, during his escape, is bitten by a poisonous leech. Kitai administers the antidote, but two of his capsules are damaged and his nervous system shuts down. When Kitai awakens, he narrowly escapes a thermal shift. Kitai lies to Cypher, not informing him of the damaged capsules. That night, Kitai listens to Cypher tell him a story of when he was attacked by an Ursa, how he realized that fear is merely an illusion created by the mind's thoughts of the future, and thus he first began to ghost himself from the Ursas, choosing to live rather than to let his enemies, both fear and the Ursas, decide his fate. The following day, Kitai reaches a mountaintop and Cypher learns about the broken capsules. Knowing that the only way to make it with two capsules would be to skydive, Cypher orders Kitai to abort the mission. Believing his father still sees him as a disappointment, Kitai blames Senshi's death on Cypher's absence on the day of the attack. He skydives from the mountaintop, but is captured by a large bird of prey and his communicator is damaged. Kitai wakes in a nest of the bird, where he is surrounded by big cats. The bird attacks the big cats, and Kitai, after himself defending the chicks against the cats, escapes. He reaches a river, and builds a raft to continue along the river. Tired, Kitai falls asleep on the raft. He dreams of his sister, Senshi, who reassures him that Cypher's bitterness is just his own anger for not saving her. 
Senshi urges Kitai to wake up and when he does, he is surprised by another thermal shift and nearly freezes to death. Kitai is rescued when the bird, who had lost its brood when the cats attacked, sacrifices itself for him. Kitai reaches the tail section and retrieves the emergency beacon along with another communicator, weapon, and more oxygen capsules. The communicator only allows Cypher to see and hear Kitai, but not for Kitai to hear him. Kitai learns the ship's Ursa escaped and killed the rest of the crew. The emergency beacon does not activate, and Cypher realizes that the atmosphere is blocking the signal. Kitai heads to and climbs up a nearby volcano from which he can fire the beacon, and is injured when the Ursa attacks him. Kitai is able to control his fear and ghost himself from the Ursa enough to kill it. He then fires the beacon. A rescue team arrives, and the two travel back to Nova Prime. Topic Cast Topic Production Will Smith conceived this story when he was watching the television show called I Shouldn't Be Alive with his brother in law Khalid Pinkett. It was originally not a science fiction story but about a father and son crashing their car in the mountains or some remote region, with the son having to go out and get rescue for his father. Smith then decided to change the setting to 1000 years in the future, which required a higher budget. The film was also intended to be the first in a trilogy. Smith had his production company Overbrick contact Gary Witter who was then known for his script for The Book of Eli with a simple log line for a film, a father and son crash landed on Earth 1000 years after it had been abandoned by humankind. Impressed with his idea and excited about the opportunity to work with him, Witter fleshed out Smith's idea and pitched it to him, subsequently becoming the first employee on the project. A month after the release of The Last Airbender, Smith contacted M. Night Shyamalan on August 6 to wish him happy birthday and to persuade him to direct his film with his son Jaden as the star. Smith and Shyamalan had planned to work on a film before but it never worked out. Impressed with the entire script, Shyamalan officially made this project, then entitled 1000 AE, his next directorial effort on October 20, and quietly shelved his own secret untitled project with Bruce Willis, Bradley Cooper, and Gwyneth Paltrow loosely attached. There was another starring role for an adult male, but sources indicated that Smith would not be taking it on. Sony Pictures Entertainment has a first-look deal with Overbrick, so it was expected to be the studio home for A.E. Shyamalan later suggested the film would feature other members of the Smith family, and that it would not be in 3D but he had an idea for something kind of technically interesting. In December 2011, Columbia Pictures, a subsidiary of Sony, signed Will and Jaden Smith to star in the film with Shyamalan directing. Shyamalan, who co-wrote the screenplay with Gary Witter, produced the film with Overbrick's James Lasseter, Smith, Ken Stovitz, and Jada Pinkett Smith. Doug Belgrad, president of Columbia Pictures, made the announcement and said, Knight is an outstanding filmmaker who has a tremendous vision for this science fiction adventure story and we couldn't be more excited to be working again with Jaden after our experiences on the pursuit of happiness and the Karate Kid and added, We're thrilled to have the two of them together on this project. Shyamalan also added, The chance to make a scary, science fiction film starring Jaden and Will is my dream project. Will Smith's decision to take on the starring adult male role required him to step aside in producing and starring in the Hurricane Katrina drama The American Can, and offered the lead role to Denzel Washington instead. The shooting of the movie was also pushed back from September 2011 to January 2012. On July 25, 2011, Smith traveled to Costa Rica accompanied by an entourage of about 20 people, including Shyamalan, to scout for locations to shoot the film. They visited sites like the Arenal volcano, hot springs, and a lake, and some beaches. In September, Colombia committed to a June 7, 2013 release date. Shyamalan also scouted locations in Philadelphia. 
50% of the filming was to take place at the New Sun Center Studios in Delaware County, Chester Township. Other locations would be in Costa Rica, Utah and Northern California. Shyamalan also visited Valley Forge Military Academy, the filming location of TAPS, for research of the film, then entitled After Earth, as Jaden Smith would be playing a military cadet of the future. The screenplay by Witter and Shyamalan was later polished by Stephen Gahan and Mark Boll. Jonathan Young, a psychologist and screenwriter, polished the mythic journey structure. Principal photography for After Earth began in February 2012. Much of the filming took place in Costa Rica, Humboldt County, and Aston. After Earth became the first film from Sony to be both shot and presented in the emerging 4K digital format. It was primarily shot with Sony's Cinealta F65 camera, which was shipped in January 2012. However, a skydiving sequence required a smaller-sized Canon Cinema EOS C500 4K camera mounted on the helmet of a professional skydriver. The cinematographer Peter Sushitsky who picked Sony F65 digital camera for the movie over other digital and film cameras, argued that benefits of film are lost when shown in theaters with digital projectors, as many are today. On April 19, 2013, Shyamalan announced that the release date had been moved a week earlier to May 31, 2013 in North America and Korea, which put it against Now You See Me and The Purge, scheduled to open in the United States in the same week. A few days later, the U.S. release of The Purge was rescheduled for June 7, 2013, taking over the slot vacated by After Earth. On May 3, it was revealed that Korean-American singer Jay Park would be participating on the official soundtrack of the film in Korea, with a song titled, I Like To Party. On May 5, a 30-second snippet of the song was released with a trailer. Topic. Marketing The estimated worldwide marketing budget for After Earth was approximately $100 million in addition to the $135 million to produce the film. Initial marketing began online with an internet marketing campaign on Facebook and Google+, including a teaser trailer. Alongside the Facebook marketing is a Web 2.0 site that lets people scroll through different images and paragraphs in a complex dynamic way. An image of Jaden's character in costume was released online on February 15, 2012. Later in the year, a theatrical teaser was released alongside a trailer for the competing Joseph Kaczynski film Oblivion. On March 12, a modified version of After Earth's theatrical teaser was released as the official trailer. The official trailer was broadcast as a TV spot during late May 2013. The trailer featured the menu music of the video game Deus Ex, Human Revolution, composed by Michael McCann. In a stark contrast to his previous films, Shyamalan's name was notably absent from trailers, TV commercials, and marketing signage. Instead, Sony Pictures opted to feature Will and Jaden Smith prominently in the marketing campaign. Sony's worldwide marketing and distribution chairman, Jeff Blake, said that, Knight is, without a doubt, a world-class filmmaker who we were thrilled to team up with on this project. But, together, we decided to focus our campaign on both the action and Will and Jaden given that, After Earth, is an adventure story of a father and son. Alex Suskind of Moviefone pointed out to Shyamalan that After Earth was not being marketed on the strength of his name unlike his previous projects, to which he responded, There's such a specific expectation that comes with a name. It's nice to have people watch the movie and then have them talk about the storyteller, it's a healthy balance. On April 24, XPRIZE, Sony and Overbrick launched the XPRIZE After Earth Challenge, a robotics competition to promote the May 31st release of After Earth. The film premiered on May 29 at Ziegfeld Theatre in New York City, with a wide variety of celebrities attending, including Bruce Willis, 50 Cent, Spike Lee, and Justin Bieber. 
Canadian comedian Russell Peters who made fun of Shyamalan when accepting the Razzie Award on his behalf for The Last Airbender also attended and even posed with Shyamalan. Sony Electronics hosted an exclusive 4K screening of After Earth at the Paramount Studios Theater on Friday, May 31 during the 2013 Cine Gear Expo in Hollywood. The event was held for registered Cine Gear Expo attendees and Sony guests from 6.30 to 9.30 p.m. followed by a panel discussion with the filmmakers and production team. After guests filled the 500-plus seat theater, a second screening was held on Saturday, June 1 to accommodate additional guests from 7.30 p.m. to 9.30 p.m. On June 6, the European Space Agency ESA partnered with Sony Pictures International to support the release of the film, stating that it shares common themes in the film of concern for Earth's future and educating the next generation. According to their announcement, ESA and Sony were to hold an after-Earth competition to win the opportunity to go to Bordeaux, France, and have a «space experience» in weightlessness on a «parabolic» flight on Novespace's Zero-G aircraft. The winner were to receive paid travel expenses to and from Bordeaux and one night's accommodation for two people, and would only be eligible to participate in the reduced gravity aircraft on October 25 following a medical exam. <laughs> Books Several books were released as supplemental tie-ins for the film, After Earth, Innocence by Michael Jan Friedman and Robert Greenberger, illustrated by Benito Lobel. Innocence is a prequel comic book to After Earth released by Del Rey Books on November 14, 2012. After Earth, United Ranger Corps Survival Manual is an illustrated manual that describes the After Earth universe from the history of the United Ranger Corps written by Robert Greenberger. It was published through Insight Editions LLC and released on May 21, 2013. The book also follows humanity's exodus from Earth, and the ongoing battle against the Skrell. It contains the secrets of ghosting, the mastery of the Cutlass, a schematic of the Ranger base, a complete guide to the highly evolved animals of Earth, and a handwritten journal entry from Cypher Rega. After Earth, Katai's journal written by Christine Paymany illustrated Jason A. Katzenstein is a paperback book with black and white illustrations for younger readers released by HarperCollins on May 21, 2013. After Earth, the official novel of the epic film After Earth by Peter David was released in paperback by publishing company Del Rey Books on May 28, 2013. The book features an expanded story of the film as well as supplemental stories. Topic box office During its opening weekend, After Earth took in $27.5 million in box office receipts in North America and $2.5 million in South Korea. Sony Pictures projected a launch of around $38 million, but the actual number was 17% lower than the lowest pre-release expectation of $33 million. It finished in third place behind Fast and Furious 6, an action film, and Now You See Me, a caper film. Taking into account the popularity of principal actor Will Smith, the disappointing finish led the Wall Street Journal to call it a flop. Ray Subers of Box Office Mojo noted the $27 million weekend placed it between two sci-fi flops of 2012 films with $200 million plus budgets, Battleship $25.5 million and John Carter $30.2 million, and also drew half of the co-star's previous openings, Will Smith's Men in Black 3 $54.6 million and Jaden Smith's The Karate Kid $55.7 million. Scott Mendelson from Forbes argued that Sony made a mistake of hiding M. Night Shyamalan as they promoted the film because for better or worse, the general public knows who he is and his name on the marquee reflects that you're not going to get a conventional genre film, that there may be something else up its sleeve. Sony Pictures spokesman Steve Eltzer said a weekend take of about $30 million in the United States and Canada would be a solid number for a movie that is not a branded sequel. Sony distribution chief Rory Brewer said, Certainly we would have liked to have done more, but this was always going to be a worldwide play. The Hollywood Reporter reported Sony insiders estimate a potential loss at about $20 million if the film does not gross high overseas, though estimates of top executives at several rival studios are much higher. 
On Jimmy Kimmel Live, Will Smith admitted he was also disappointed with the box office performance and joked, Here's how I think about it, Jimmy, let's be honest. Three is the new one. You know how many ones it takes to make a three, and, it's been almost, like, two decades since I had a movie that wasn't number one. That's over now, buddy. Thanks, on the worldwide release the following week, after Earth took in an estimated $45.5 million in 60 overseas markets, narrowly beating Fast and Furious 6 estimates of $45.3 million for the number one spot at the international box office. Including the film's launch in South Korea, After Earth made an estimated total of $48.6 million at the international box office, bringing its worldwide gross to an estimated $95,192,000. Sources for Sony Pictures International releasing said the overall launch was bigger than debuts in the same territories of Oblivion $45.1 million, The Last Airbender $42.7 million, and Jaden Smith vehicle The Karate Kid $32.3 million. Sony distribution chief Rory Brewer said that Sony was happy with the overseas opening and expects much of the film's ticket sales to come from international markets and, it definitely was the exciting start we were looking for internationally. Reception Critical response On Rotten Tomatoes, the film has an approval rating of 11% based on 201 reviews and an average rating of 3.8.10. The website's critical consensus reads, After Earth is a dull, ploddingly paced exercise in sentimental sci-fi, and the latest setback for director M. Night Shyamalan's once promising career. On Metacritic, the film has a score of 33 out of 100 based on 41 critics, indicating generally unfavorable reviews. Audiences polled by Cinemascore gave the film an average grade of B. On an A plus to F scale, Joe Morgenstern, film critic for The Wall Street Journal, opened his review by asking, Is After Earth the worst movie ever made? His answer was, Maybe not, there's always Battlefield Earth to remind us how low the bar can go. Like Morgan Stern, Manila Dargis of the New York Times made note of the film's use of central themes in Scientology before concluding the film was nothing more than a big screen vanity project. Los Angeles Times reviewer Betsy Sharkey wondered how the elder Smith could have gone from the charismatic performance in the serious film The Pursuit of Happiness, also co-starring his son, to the performance in After Earth. She also saw compounding problems in the creative process leading to a lack of subtlety and nuance. The script has no nuance, none. And when Shyamalan moves into the director's chair, the script problems are magnified. Scott founders of Variety opined that the film was further proof that Shyamalan had become a director for hire, with his disinterest palpable from first frame to last. Peter Bradshaw of The Guardian gave the film one star out of five, calling it another uncompromisingly terrible film featuring a triple whammy of abysmal acting, directing and story, and saying that Jaden Smith plays the role throughout with a face like a smacked bum. And, Keitai, Jaden Smith's character, must be like his dad, show no fear. Or any emotion. Or any acting talent of any sort. Matt Zoller Sites of MattZollerCitesOfRogerBot.com awarded the film 3.5 stars out of 4 and commented that the movie is, a moral tale disguised as a sci-fi blockbuster. It's no classic, but it's a special movie, spectacular and wise. Jim Viavoda of IGN awarded the film a 6.7 out of 10 and commented, M. Night Shyamalan isn't quite back in top form here, but After Earth is certainly the best movie he's made in years. Charlie Jane Anders of io9 commented that, Having suffered through Last Airbender, I can attest that this film is no Last Airbender. After Earth stays grounded, and manages to tell a pretty decent story. The special effects received a mixed response. 
René Rodriguez of the Miami Herald said that, "...the CGI creatures in the film look as fake as the monkeys in Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull." And Rebecca Murray of About.com said that the effects, "...look as though they've been created by someone who just got accepted to film school." Charlie McCollum of the San Jose Mercury News called them, "...surprisingly unconvincing, a step or two above the effects in those deliberately cheeseball sci-fi flicks the Sci-Fi Channel shows on Saturday night." Michael O'Sullivan of The Washington Post called the production design, "...blandly generic," and the special effects, props and costumes, "...cheap and slapdash looking." However, Austin Kennedy of Film Geek Central said the special effects were top notch. John Depko and Suzanne Perez of Daily Pilot called them impressive. Nathan Duke of Patch Media said they were impressive enough. And Peter Feldman of The Citizen described them as solid. American astronaut Buzz Aldrin said the movie is quite action packed and a touching father son story but is not realistic because there was a lot of noise in space you don't get that much noise a quote that is highly cited in the news and misconstrued as him nitpicking or panning the film aldrin was impressed by the set design stating that the scenes of the cities were really remarkable but differed significantly from his experience on the moon which he described as magnificent desolation in contrast to the magnificent experience that humanity could move itself ahead to get to the moon topic <laughs> will smith's response in an interview with esquire smith called the film the most painful failure of his career and expressed regret at leading his son into the production. He also unfavorably compared the experience to Wild Wild West, which also underperformed expectations at the box office. <laughs> M. Night Shyamalan's response When Shyamalan gave the Ashok C. Sani Distinguished Scholar in Residence Lecture at NYU Stern School of Business on April 16, 2019, he revealed that he regretted accepting the directing gigs on After Earth and 2010's The Last Airbender. I did a couple huge, big budget CGI movies, he said. There has always been this inexorable pull to join the group, a constant seduction in the form of whatever you want to tally, in the form of money, or safety, ease, not getting criticized. I did these movies, and I rightfully got crushed, because they rightfully said, you don't believe in yourself, you don't believe in your own voice, and in you don't believe in your values, I felt really lost. It just didn't work. There's probably something Darwinian about all this. When Shyamalan went on to make the visit, he made the decision to begin investing in his own productions. I pay for my movies now, he said. After this 10-year period of working at studios on junk movies, I was not happy. Topic: 4K screening. Ryan Nakashima of Associated Press was generally impressed with the film's 4K resolution picture quality, though the visual effects shots that comprised about a third of the movie were done in 2K resolution to save on cost and time. Nakashima commented, I could see details I've never noticed before the actor's tiny skin imperfections, or Smith's salt and pepper whiskers. In a distant shot of Smith's son Jaden running down a riverbed, I was struck by how many small rocks were defined clearly from such a distance. Yet other shots that included computer-generated cityscapes or otherworldly creatures looked less sharp. The cinematographer Peter Sushitsky was apologetic about that, saying, The movie is only half in true 4K. I'm sad about that. It still looks good. Scott Wilkinson of AVS was similarly impressed by the visual effects, though he did not enjoy the movie itself. Even sitting too far away, the movie itself looked gorgeous sharp as attack with beautiful colors. 
The smallest details, such as Jaden Smith's character in The Far Distance, somehow looked clearer than I would have expected under normal circumstances. I got the distinct impression that the image could have been blown up by quite a bit and no detail would have been lost. The CGI animals did look a bit artificial, but that didn't bother me very much at all. Topic: Controversies. Topic: Scientology hypothesis. Some critics were struck by what they saw as parallels in the movie's plot, dialogue and imagery with the Scientology teachings of L. Ron Hubbard, particularly those in Dianetics, The Modern Science of Mental Health and Dianetics, the original thesis. Similarly, Peter Travers of Rolling Stone compared the film to the Scientology-themed flop, Battlefield Earth, describing the film as an unholy mess of platitudes and posturing that wastes the talents and charm of Will Smith. Pointing out Smith's alleged ties to Scientology, including his funding of New Village Leadership Academy, a school that uses study tech as its teaching method, Matt Patches of Vulture declared the movie probably the clearest evidence of Smith's investment in Scientology, and detailed how he saw the film paralleling its teachings. The Hollywood Reporter published a guest column review written by former Scientology member Mark Headley which pointed out similar parallels. The Sun noted an observation made by a former Scientologist that the fictional Rangers Corps is similar to the Church's Sea Org branch, which has its own cadet branch. David S. Turetsky, a research professor at Carnegie Mellon and a well known expert on and critic of Scientology, dismissed these perceived parallels. I don't see any Scientology content at all in this movie, he told Rich Juzwak of Gorka. The themes of the movie appear to be standard adventure fare, physical courage, coming of age, father-son relationships, battling danger to prove oneself and earn a father's respect. These are not Scientology themes. There is no mention of evil psychiatrists, mind control, engrams, etc. Turetsky also addressed multiple points made by the Scientology hypothesis including the film's marketing materials prominently featuring a volcano, the original version of Dianetics did not have any pictures on the cover. After Hubbard dreamed up OT3 around 1967, someone got the idea of putting a volcano on the cover of Dianetics to re-stimulate the engrams of us non-believers and influence us to buy the book. But most Scientologists don't know anything about OT3 or why there is a volcano on the cover of some versions of Dianetics. A parody website cheerupwillsmith.com, which was created for the purpose of cheering up Will Smith with the perceived failure of After Earth, gained some attention in the media. Flyers were also posted in East Village, Manhattan requesting Scientology members to see After Earth a minimum of three times and then upload a positive video for Will Smith on that website. The site has a video mockumentary of two Sea Org members, along their way to see After Earth, recorded video praises for Will Smith from strangers and cajoled them into signing a billion-year contract with the Church of Scientology. When they delivered the signatures to a local branch of the church near Times Square, a church representative told them they were impersonating the church and threatened to call the police if they do not leave. The video and the site was created by Jason Selvig and Davram Stiefler of the comedy duo The Good Liars who had previously pretended to be Time Warner cable representatives asking people how they can make service worse for customers. The Church of Scientology International branded the Scientology claims as silly nonsense and a myth launched by a handful of self-promoters. The church's director of public affairs, Karen Pouw, stated to Theomproper magazine that the film and its storyline contain themes common to many of the world's philosophies, not unique to Scientology. While Pouw did not dispute the similarities, she counted that overcoming fear has been a universal theme in stories for thousands of years as well central to countless film plots. She noted the same logic would seemingly make Star Wars, Episode I, The Phantom Menace a Scientology-themed movie, which includes the dialogue. Fear is the path to the dark side. Fear leads to anger, anger leads to hate, hate leads to suffering. 
Later, domain registrar and web hosting company GoDaddy took down CheerupleSmith.com citing copyright infringement, trademark infringement, and false identity. Joe Kloc of the Daily Dot presumes the complaints came from the Church of Scientology. Topic: <laughs> Nepotism allegations. There was heavy criticism of Jaden Smith's role in the film. Christopher Orr of The Atlantic stated, He is entirely lacking in the big screen charisma that made his father one of Hollywood's major stars. Gary Walcott of Tri City Herald commented that, The 15 year old Jaden doesn't appear to demonstrate much talent and has zero charisma. As the film also stars Zoe Kravitz, Alex Papadimas of Grantland called after Eartha. Parade float tribute to nepotism. Mikhail Lakaros of GMA calls the movie devoid of common sense and purpose, save for nepotism. In response to the nepotism allegations, Gary Suzman of Time magazine argued, "In Hollywood, such nepotism is no sin. In fact, it's often a selling point." David S. Cohen of Variety pointed out that putting family members into projects is hardly new, yet it rarely inspires such vituperation. Abina Agyeman Fisher of Newzone.com suggested that the allegations were thinly veiled racism and an example of a double standard being applied to black people. However, Charlie Line of The Guardian writes that nepotism has traditionally carried a stigma. <laughs> <laughs> Awards and nominations